Hello and welcome to this video tutorial series from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and in this section of the series on modeling the Porsche we're going to come back to where we left off. It's been quite some time since we last looked at this, several months in fact I believe. And so before we get started let's just go and kind of go ahead and recap and see what we've done so far. So far we've gone in and modeled the mass majority of the car, we've modeled the wheels, a lot of the little details and bits and pieces here and there. But now we've got a few things left to do. Now do note that we're not going to be doing everything that's left within this series before bringing it to a close just for time's sake, but some things that we are going to tackle in this section are modeling the door handles and modeling the interior of the headlamps. And then we'll bring it up with one final section on rendering the entire car. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to jump over to the headlamps here and let me just show you I have pulled up a couple of different references that we can use. These are all, again, Creative Commons licensed. And we've got this one here, to this one, and this one, just giving us some different angles and views of what is inside the headlamps, as you can see. Now, we're going to keep this fairly simple. We're going to model in a lot of this geometry here, but we're going to just kind of approximate a lot of it. You know, I don't have any exact detail shots of anything here, and so we're not going to be able to get this exact, but we can get it, you know, fairly close. So let's go ahead and start out, and I'm just going to switch into front view with one on my number pad, then hit 5 to switch out of perspective mode, and we've already got this, uh, this kind of placeholder for, the, for the, the lens on the headlamp, so let's go ahead and use that. First I'm going to switch over to the object properties, and I'm going to disable the, the wireframe draw, and then I'm also going to turn on transparency. Now you won't notice anything with that just yet, but we are going to be using that here in a little bit to be able to see through the model when we add a transparent material to it. So on this, let's go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode, and let's just pull it right up along the Y axis by hitting G and then Y right up to the edge of the, the lamp right there along the rim there. Okay, and then we'll go ahead Let's scale this outside ridge up just a little bit just so it's completely encased within this rim. Now let's go ahead and add a subsurf modifier to this from the, sub, from the modifiers panel and subdivision surface. We'll add a level 2 and let's turn on optimal display. Let's go ahead and select everything and hit W and shade smooth just so that we can see it nice and smooth. You'll notice we're getting these very nasty black marks so let's hit control N to recalculate those normals. And then what I want to do is let's go and alt right click on these loops and box select the center here and we're just going to hit G and Y and pull them out just a little bit along the Y axis just to add the slightest dome to to the headlamp lens. There we are. We don't want to do too much but just enough to kind of accent the shape. Alright, let's hit 3 to go back into side view. We're going to select the lens that we just did there. And now something that I want to do in order to ISO this, you know, we've got a lot of different mesh objects in our scene here. Now, one thing that I could do to gain better control of them is I could go ahead and just hide them by hitting H and then revealing with Alt H, but this really doesn't suit my purpose very well. I'm just going to move the ground plane over to layer 2. But this doesn't really suit my purpose very well because I would like to be able to view them so I can see the entire thing as a whole but just not have to worry about selecting them and them getting in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to select the car body and I can see it in the outliner view here. It's highlighted in white as plain. So first let's control click on it and name it car underscore body and then scroll back up or scroll down to where it's now been placed so we can find it and let's just click this mouse cursor icon and that will disable its selectability essentially such that now we're unable to select the car body no matter what we do until we re-enable that. So this just prevents us from selecting it and better kind of isolates our manipulations. We can do the same thing perhaps with the car windows. Let's find this car underscore windows and we'll turn off the selectability. We can do the same thing with some of the wheels and we'll call this car wheels back or actually these are the tires. front ones as well. Okay, and we'll go ahead and disable each of those. Now we don't have to do this with everything, 
but just doing it a little bit here and there will kind of make it a lot easier so that we can, and we'll call this uh, treads. Doing this will just make our manipulations a lot easier when we're zoomed in closely. We've got a lot of different wire details. Okay, now we'll go ahead and just leave that as is. And the reason I'm leaving it, oh, we've got one more there, and these are the, the back tail lights. Underscore tail lights. Now you'll notice the ones that I did are just the ones that are directly behind our headlamps here, such the only things we can select is this and this. So those will just make things a lot easier. So let's go ahead and hide the lens because we want to just work on this section right here. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, hit three to go to side view. And then looking at our reference, which I've just got on my second monitor here, but you can go ahead and pull it up in any other window. We want to go ahead and bring this up back through here to right about there. You know, the headlamp isn't very deep past this point. And so we'll just do that there. Now the first thing that I want to place is the actual, the the actual lens or the light within there. Let me go ahead and just in the outliner view, I'm going to switch this over to a UV image editor and I'm going to pull in the reference that I'm looking at specifically right here. And that is this one here. This way I can show you the details that I'm working on. And then I will go ahead and click this icon to pin it such that no matter what view or mode I'm in, it continuously displays this. So I want to go ahead and create this little thing first. This is the actual lamp within the headlight. So I'm first going to alt right click on this edge loop here. I'm going to hit shift S and cursor to selected. Then I'm going to hit shift A add mesh circle. Press F6 to bring up my operator panel. I'm going to change this down to 12 vertices. And then we'll just go ahead and leave that like so. I'm going to hit R and X to rotate around the X axis. Type in 90 degrees and then scale this down. And you can see it's going to be scaled to about somewhere right in there. And then I want to go ahead and position it right in this upper left hand corner, something like that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and hit E to extrude, scale this in a little bit, just add a little depth to it. Then Alt, I'm going to Alt right click, select the interior. And from the side view, I'm going to go ahead and hit E to extrude, take it back to about something like that, scale it down. Somewhere in there looks good. I'm going to select the entire thing. I'm going to move it forward to about right there where it appears to be selected. Now, you'll notice that all the UVs are selected, which I don't want to be able to see these. So I'm just going to select everything on my mesh. Hit W and merge. Oh, no, no, no. Select everything so they're all visible in the UV image editor. Hit W and then weld. And then just get those out of there because I don't want to visualize those right now. I just want to see only the image. Okay, and so then what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and extrude this in a little bit, just about like this. And I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate this, take it back a little bit, scale it down just slightly, and then I'm just going to extrude this and scale it just to create a simple dome shape for the actual light bulb. I'm going to hit E to extrude this one last time, and hit W and merge at center, just giving me a very simple dome shape like that. Maybe these last two, I'll just go ahead and scale that out just a little bit more. Okay, I can select everything, hit W and Shade Smooth. Then we can go ahead and add in a couple control loop cuts or basically defining ones along here and here. That's just Control R and then sliding those just to make these, these edges nice and sharp. You can see we have a normals issue right here, so I'll select everything and hit Control N again. From the side view, I'm going to alt-right click to select this edge loop. I'm going to hit E to extrude, take it back just a little bit along the y-axis, and then take it back further again, somewhere about in there. I'll do another perimeter loop just to make things nice and sharp. Then I'm going to extrude and scale that down one last time, bring it in something like this, extrude this, scale it down, and then bring it out like so. Now this last bit, I'm completely making up because I can't see behind this area right in here. So I'm just doing something that I feel would be about right. Now what I want to go ahead and do is 
add in all those extra little geometric detail that are really going to help give me those, those highlights and the reflections that you're seeing on there. And the way that we're going to do this is I'm just going to hit Control tab to go into face mode and I'm just going to select this face right here. Then I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it and then S and X to scale along the X axis and just scale it down to about right there. Then from the side view I'm going to hit Control tab and go into vertex mode. I'm going to deselect this bottom half and then just take this down just a little bit. As you can see there's a bit of a ridge right here. And I'm going to select this Hit E to extrude, take it up just a little bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and add in an edge loop right along that tip and along this tip. Again, that's just Control R, and then it automatically puts you into slide mode. Just to save on some uh, poly count, I'm going to delete these bottom faces because they're not necessary. And then I'm going to go ahead and find my object again and just select it with L. And then I want to go ahead and hit first. Oh, okay, step back for a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a spin duplicate command to just replicate this all the way around the circle. But in order to do that, I need to go ahead and position my 3D cursor right in the center. So I can just select the center vertex, hit Shift S and cursor to selected, deselect that vertex by hitting A just to deselect everything, and then using the L command to select linked, I'm just going to select this, this small object by hovering my mouse over it. Now I can just hit spacebar and type in spin and I'll bring up the spin command or alt R and hit return. Now you immediately notice it's been duplicated along right here. Well, that doesn't work very well so what we want to do is we want to hit F6 to bring up the operator panel and let's first go ahead and set it to 360 degrees and then be sure that we check the dupl dupli option for duplicate so that it actually duplicates each object rather than extruding it and then let's go ahead and just take this up to say 45 steps. That ought to be about right and that looks good. Now we've got one duplicate object, so let's just hit X and delete vertices. Since we did a whole 360 degrees. And now you can see that that really helps a whole lot in getting this final look. And then we're just going to leave it just like that. So now what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and create these back panels here. And so for these, I'm just going to select this. I'm going to hit, actually no, I'm going to select one of these vertices or one of these edge loops in here, maybe this one. I'm going to hit Shift D, right click, scale it up just a little bit, take it back a little bit, and then we're going to hit E to extrude, scale it up, and then I'm going to move it over to position right about, about like this, just a little smaller than the entire perimeter. And then from the side view, I'm going to pull it up along the, the Y axis a little bit like that. Now this may not be a perfect shape in regards to how it's actually created, but do, based on my pretty poor references in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like that. I'm pretty content with that. And so actually, no, before I do that, before I move this up, so I'm just stepping back a few, I want to go ahead and manipulate some of these edges. Because you'll notice here, we, we have a seam right here, a seam here, and a seam here and here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this vertex, I'm going to pull it up until it's pretty much straight. About like that. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Then I'll go ahead and add in a new edge loop along here, a new edge loop along here, and I'm going to go ahead and scale these to zero along the z-axis, the two vertices, and then just scale them out about like that. And in fact I'll go ahead and select both these edge loops, scale them to zero along the z-axis, pull them out about like so. I'll select these edge vertices or edge loops, deselect the bottom ones, scale these down, pull them in just so that they fit within the original circle. I'm going to take these, take them down along the z-axis, scale them out, and then I'll go ahead and select both of these and hit X and delete these faces. That just gives me a both of these forms a good starting point. So now I'm going to also hit the, select these, hit E to extrude, scale them along the z-axis, do the same thing here, sharpen those up a little bit. I'll add in a edge loop right along the outside, just like that. I'll do the same thing here, and that's just Control R. 
gives me a good starting point. So now I can go ahead and select these outside edges like that. And from the side view, I'll pull them out along the y-axis like that. And that will give me a nice kind of mirror, mirror form that will be able to send off a lot of these reflections very well. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and create these, these kind of wings on the side here. So I'm just going to hit Shift A, add a cube, scale it down, move it over along the x-axis, scale it down along the z to about like that, scale it up along the x. I'm going to go ahead and intersect this plane and this right here. From the side view, I'm going to scale this down, take it in to about about right there. I'm first going to go ahead and deselect one side, delete those faces, select the other side, delete those faces. That way I don't have to worry about the perimeter edge loops too much. And I'm going to go ahead and take this back along the y-axis, about like that, and I'll delete that face too. And then I'm going to go ahead and take these front, front two vertices, hit G and Y to bring them all the way up along the y-axis like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this with Shift D and hit period on my keyboard to mirror around the cursor. So then I hit S to scale, X to lock to the z-axis, and then negative one on my number pad, essentially mirroring that mesh across the x-axis. Then I'll pull those in to just about like that, giving me the wings on both sides very nicely. Now on this left, this left side here, we can see that this comes out. And so let's go ahead and select this interior loop, pull this in. Actually, let's just go ahead and add in a new edge loop right about there and a new edge loop right up next to it. So deselect the bottom half and pull this up about like so. And then we'll add in another edge loop right next to it. And then we're going to add another edge loop around like this. Uh, let's see. Let's isolate this. There we go. So we'll add one right along like that and another one along the top. There we go. That makes that nice and sharp. So we'll do the same thing on this side. And it doesn't have to be really exact. Shade everything smooth. Maybe add in another loop right there. Make sure that's good. And there we go. That gives us those wings pretty nicely. Uh, should work quite well for what we're doing. Now I'm going to go ahead and scale these down, these outside edges, here and here, towards the cursor just a little bit, but only along the X and the Z axis. So I'm going to hit S and Shift Y to just bring them down so that we see just a little bit more of the seam right here that you can see is, is apparent in our, in our reference. Get rid of that overlap in there. Same thing there. And we'll do the same thing right here. So now it's clear that they're not, not connected to the, or directly connected anyway, to the actual body or this in the casing of the headlamp. Okay. Now we're basically done with this, sort of. So what we're, now what we want to do is we need to add in, you can't see it from, from this one, but on another view here, you can see this, this small lamp right in here. So let's go ahead and add that. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to first, let's go ahead and select this face right here, Shift S, Cursor 2 selected, and that looks pretty much right on target in terms of the placement for this. And so I'm just going to hit Shift A, add mesh and circle, F6 to bring up the operator panel, and take this down to 8 since it's relatively small. Rotate it at 90 around the x-axis. Uh, 
Switch back into vertex mode. There we go. Scale this down. And I'll scale it down to about right like that. And then we're going to go ahead and pull this back. Hit E to extrude. Take it in like so. E to extrude again. Add in some sharp edge to this. Take it back. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and shift. I'm going to bring this back more. Add in another edge loop right around the center there to make it sharp. But then I'm going to go ahead and shift duplicate, or I'm going to shift D to duplicate this, scale it down a little bit, and then bring this out for the actual light bulb that you see in here. Now the reason that I duplicated it was because it's going to require a different material later down the road. And so if I duplicate it, then that will make it easier to add that separate material than it would if I kept everything connected. And so then I'm just creating a very simple shape on here. It's hard to tell exactly how that's shaped, and so I'm just kind of freeforming this a little bit. Add in two edge loops, scale, excluding the y-axis. Maybe bring that in. And just create a fairly simple form that should work. Let me make this a little bit shorter. Get a little bit less of a tip on there. Select everything, W and Shade Smooth. And there we go. Now I'm not going to worry about putting a circle or a hole in this section, in this larger section here, uh, simply because even though it would be more accurate from the distances that we're going to be looking at this model, you know, we're not, we don't, within the scope of a tutorial, we don't have the, the time to make this um, perfectly detailed and hold up under very, very close inspection. And so instead, we're going to make it look really good from, you know, average viewing angles, for such as a full render and such. And so at that distance, you know, like where our camera is right now, you would never even notice that little tiny circle in there, particularly once mixed in with all the reflections that this interior of the headlamp will have. Now, on this, I'm just going to create one last piece, and that is I want to go ahead and create uh, this little hole right in here. It's going to be pretty simple to do. What we're going to do is on the casing here, I'm going to select these three edges just like this. I'm going to hit V to rip them apart. Then I actually want to select the other side of it, right there. And we're just going to deselect these top portion, pull these ones back, hit S, Y, and 0 to scale it to 0 along the Y axis, and pull it back to right about there. Looks about right. And then we're going to go ahead, and first, this whole thing needs to come back a little bit further, actually, so we'll go ahead and pull this back like this just a little bit further, and then selecting these, pull these back, and we're going to hit e to extrude, bring these in, and then I'm going to fill in a face right there, fill in a face right here, and then we're actually going to select these two center vertices, hit e to, and, or hit X, delete vertices. So now I can select these two in interior portions by hitting alt right click, Hit E to extrude, take it down a little bit along the Z axis, scale it a little bit along the X axis, and then we'll do that. We'll add in another edge loop right along the edge right there, and right along the edge right there. And there we have it. If we go ahead and just select this, let's go to materials and assign this material 0.001 to all of it, just so we're not getting that nasty area in there. And then you can see that we're getting this little shape in here that we don't necessarily want. Although, let's see. We don't really like this creasing in here, and it's actually being caused by this interior edge loop that we added primarily. So let's hit X, delete that edge loop. And in fact, let's delete this one as well, the two ones that we added to sharpen it, because they're actually at sensing the problem and instead what we can do to sharpen it because this is a very nice rounded form from the reference here let's first take these two ver two edges pull them up along the y-axis there and then maybe let's just add in another edge loop 
right along this whole perimeter to sharpen that up nicely. And that ought, ought to work just fine. And you know, we've got a little bit of creasing in here, but that's not not anything that I think we need to worry about at this point because what we're also going to do is also add in another edge loop right along here, which will sharpen up that edge very nicely. And then this crease and actually almost flows with that. Now what I want to do is I'm going to alt right click select this loop here. And I'm going to hit shift D and then pull it in just a little bit because what we're going to do is basically use this as background of geometry for this surface in here. I'll just hit E to extrude, take this back, Scale to zero along the y-axis. Accidentally extruded it. There we are. Now we can see that it's poking through just a little bit, so I'm gonna hit Control L to select the linked vertices that are connected to my active selection. And I'm gonna just hit S and X, scale it up along the x-axis just a little bit and leave it at that. Now actually we can go ahead and deselect this bottom portion, hit X and delete vertices on the top because we really don't need that. We just want this bottom geometry. We'll select everything, hit W, shade smooth, and there we go. If we now hit Alt H in object mode, we can see that we have our lens cap there and we're pretty much good to go. So we're gonna leave that like it is. Let's move on to the door handle. Now for the door handle, we're gonna go ahead and use Primarily, this orange ref car reference, because it has this nice angle of the door handle that we can see pretty clearly. So let's go ahead and load that up in here. So we'll just choose image and open, and we want that one. Move this over to where we can see it nicely. Something about like that. And now we're going to start out by just positioning our cursor right about the right place. And in fact, let's go ahead and switch this over to the outliner view real quick here, just momentarily. And re-enable selection of the car body. Switch back over to our UV image editor. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select this face right here and hit Shift S, cursor to selected. Hit Tab to leave edit mode. And then we're going to add a new object for the, the door handle. So we'll hit Shift A, add mesh circle. I'm going to hit tab, rotate it around the y-axis 90 degrees. Uh, oh, actually I need to delete that because I want to first turn down the number of vertices. And in this case, we're just going to choose 12. We'll rotate around the y-axis 90 degrees, scale it down first about like that. Fit this about right, scale along the z-axis, fit this. And then we can do some subtle tweaking to modify this shape just a little bit. Keeping the vertices uh, nice and even in terms of their distribution, that looks about right. And so let's first go ahead and create this outside form. So I'll hit E to extrude, take it in about like that, maybe a little extra along the Z axis to create this ridge here. And then I want to create this edge right in here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in another edge loop right about there, and about like that. Smooth that out just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this one down. Again, that's Control E to bring up the Edge Specials menu. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select these. I'm gonna hit F to fill this face. And I'm gonna move this down until that's roughly straight, about like that. I'm gonna go ahead and select all these, deselect this portion here, I'm going to hit E to extrude, scale it in, and I'm going to take it in along the x-axis about like this. Let's select everything and pull it out because we don't want to worry about the, we're not going to worry about forming it to the car just yet. There we go. Something about like that will look pretty good. We'll take it in one more time. There we are. Now let's go ahead and fill in the background. So we'll select these, just fill these shapes. We can see we're going to need an extra edge loop in here, so let's go ahead and add that right now. We'll scale it a little bit along the y-axis just to smooth things out. And then we want to go ahead and pull this backwards because we've got this interior shape here. I'm going to add in two more edge loops, which will later uh, fill in these areas. 
We'll scale them along the y-axis a little bit as well. And then we want to select these, pull them along the y-axis. Maybe do it a little bit more. There we go. Let's go and add a subsurf modifier to this. So we'll hit Control 2 in object mode, shortcut to quickly add a subsurf modifier. I'll we'll go switch over to modifiers panel and turn on optimal display though. I'm going to alt right click, select this loop, Control E, edge slide, bring that right in like that. Let's sharpen that up very nicely. And let's go ahead and fill in this area. So first, let's go ahead and just extrude these straight back like this. And then you can see that this will fill very nicely like that. Just selecting all four, hitting F. Select those. And then we have a grand total of six vertices. So we can fill that, and we can fill that, and it all works very, very nicely. Now this will also allow us to go ahead and add in the, the keyhole. And so maybe we'll go ahead and pull these back just a little bit. And then let's shift S, shift S, cursor to selected. We're going to delete this edge, which will remove all of these faces. We're going to hit shift S, add a new circle, hit F6 to bring up our, our operator panel. And we're going to take this right down to six vertices. Whoops. There we go. Rotate around that Y axis 90 degrees, scale it way down. We rotate just a little bit to about the size we feel the keyhole should be. And then we'll extrude this in, add an extra ridge, extrude it in. And then I'm just going to hit Shift D, bring this back out, extrude this again, and one more time, and merge at center. And the actual keyhole detail would be done strictly with a texture or something like that. Hit w, Shade Smooth, and Control N, just to smooth everything out. And then we can go ahead and fill these faces like this. Currently, we just do them one at a time, but when the new B-Mesh comes along, we'll have the, the bridge tool will probably be returned that will allow us to connect edge loops like that just directly, and very, very quickly, and very easily. Okay, now we want to go ahead and do the handle. So the way I'm going to do the handle is I'm going to select these two vertices just like this, hit Shift-S, cursor to selected, and then let's go ahead and just select these six or five, hit Shift-D, and then just extrude this along the y-axis first, switch into top view, rotate this about like that, bring it out, and just eyeball the, the curve of the door handle about like so. Bringing it in, and then we're going to just make it line up based on my best approximation. I believe the way that it works is there's actually basically a hole right here and so we're going to do just that. We'll pull this back a little bit. And then maybe we'll go ahead and select these faces. E to extrude. Scale them in a little bit. And what that'll do is just effectively sharpen this up very nicely, giving us basically a plinth with which to bring this down to. About like that. that now we can go ahead and take these outside edges or we'll just take the whole thing. E to extrude, bring it in along the x-axis and let's scale it along the y about like that, matching the this interior shape. And not a lot more to it than that. We'll go ahead and select this, control E, edge slide that along, add in another edge loop to slide that in there. Select everything, W, Shade Smooth, Control N. I'm going to add in another edge loop right along the surface there. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the interior portions. Easy. Sometimes when you have complex selections, the easiest way to select everything and then just deselect what you don't want rather than selecting everything that you do want. I'm going to scale these down along the Z axis. Give us a nice shape there. Maybe add in another edge loop on the outside there, make that nice and sharp. Add in another edge loop there, which will make this nice and sharp, but then I'll deselect these and bring these back along the y-axis to smooth that back out. Bringing this one back up to fit the curve there. And we can see that in the inside of the handle, 
this should be a bit thinner or maybe these should just be a bit wider so we'll scale these up along the y-axis go ahead and add in another edge loop there and now we're almost done with this having done the handle here I can see that this is very awkwardly placed and so I'm going to pull this in about center it right with the handle about like that I can go ahead and rotate this just personal preference to line things up a little better okay and so that's looking looking pretty good but so what I want to do now is to go ahead and merge it back with the with the door and then line things up very nicely so I'm going to go ahead and select the door handle in object mode select the car by shift right clicking and then hit control J to merge the two then I'm going to in edit mode select all the components to my my door handle and I'm gonna pull them back along the x-axis about like that I'll rotate it just a little bit so like so to match the approximate rotation of the door handle I'll lower this down just a little bit to make this line up nicely there now with that basically lined up what I want to go ahead and do is first off I'll alt right click to select this and hit E to extrude take it in like so so that I get this this ridge here I'm gonna reselect this whole thing and bring it back out along the X just the littlest bit and then what I want to do now is go ahead and go into face mode select these two faces hit E to extrude W smooth a good few times control E tab to switch back to vertex mode I'm going to delete these faces and now I'm going to use these vertices to basically line up the hole within my my mesh now to make it look like this is actually just sitting in it and so you know doing this allows me to very easily save a lot of work on mine in actually connecting these two you know I don't actually want to connect them just because it's a lot of extra work that in this case really doesn't need to happen and what we need to be careful for and watch out for is intersections in the mesh but then also distortions in the the shape of the door we want to keep keep that flow very nice and so you know we may need to manipulate the handle just a little bit and in fact we want to manipulate the handle just a little bit because this isn't actually going to be perfectly flat and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these portions right in here I'm going to deselect the bottoms though I don't want anything on the interior of the handle to be selected here this ought to work just like this but I want to go ahead and select this portion and actually I'm going to deselect this last portion in here I'm going to keep it flat and then I'm just going to pull this out along the x-axis just a little bit like that pull this out just a little bit to match that and then we'll do some smoothing work right in here um, something I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select these two faces let's try just hitting control E and rotate edge do that a couple of times and that's not going to work uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit X delete those faces and I'm going to add in a new edge loop right here that will allow me to then fill this very nicely like that and then I can go ahead and fill this there I'm gonna alt right click I'm gonna delete that edge loop we need to fill that triangle there and then merge those two into a single quad although that doesn't flow very nicely so I'm gonna select these two hit control E rotate edge rotate edge and I'll go ahead and stick with that and that works a bit better now it's a little bit messy which I'm not a big fan of in fact I'm gonna go ahead and delete these again delete those faces I'm gonna re-add in this edge loop I'm gonna bring it in right about there 
you know that you notice because I like I like that way that the top flows it flows quite nicely and so what I'm going to do is just replicate that essentially and I'll fill this like this and then what I want to do is we'll just add in one more edge loop and fill that and then fill that and what I need to do is just go ahead and smooth out the curve on these almost there being sure that it's nice and smooth there we go now we'll see if we have a hole or anything anywhere although we do have one nasty portion right here again I'm going to rework these faces, what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete these, I'm going to select this, hit E to extrude, take it out one more time, just giving me another edge loop with which to make things nice and smooth, keeping the, the circular flow there. I'm going to rotate this, bring this right down to the center, where I can then fill that and fill that where things line up perfectly, select these. Fill that, fill that, and go ahead and delete this edge loop and this edge loop, fill this with a triangle, and then merge those into a single quad. And now I just have this area in here that I need to work out, and what I'm going to do is I'll first pull this out like that, or let's see, I'm going to pull these out along the x-axis just a little bit. Take this out along the x-axis. I'm going to select these in here. They're giving me a little bit of trouble. Just hit W and smooth. And that really didn't actually work very well. So I'll undo that. Bring that up. Bring that up. And that's starting to work. A little nicer. There we go. That's smooth enough for me. Um, I want to do just bring these out just a little bit more. go and there's still a little bit of a dimple right in here and I think that will will probably suffice for what we're doing in this case although one thing that I would like to do is I would like to redo this flow just a little bit oh never mind I won't worry about it what I was thinking is I would like to be able to go and add in an edge loop all the way around this through here, but that's okay. I won't worry about it for the time being. Um, before this starts getting too long, we're already right about 45 minutes, but we made a lot of really good progress. And at this point, we're going to leave the model where it's at. We'll call it quits and I'll see you soon.